now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. Historical Couples in Crisis Now, Jennifer Pan is infamously known for hiring a hitman in 2010 to murder her parents in an effort to get out from under the oppressive type home where she was parented in a dysfunctional tiger parenting style. Now, Jennifer Pan wound up on the road to becoming a woman in crisis ever since the day she was born because she was born in an extremely oppressive home to two overly ambitious parents who had extremely unrealistic expectations for their daughter. And sadly, those unrealistic expectations basically put Jennifer Pan on a road to entering a place I call the secret world. Now, Jennifer Pan's parents originally came from Vietnam and were refugees from Vietnam who immigrated to Canada in 1979. Now, Jennifer's mother, Bic Hai Pan and Hui Hai Pan, came to Canada and married in Toronto and lived in Scarborough looking to build a better life as they found work at Magna International, an auto parts manufacturer in Aurora, Canada. And as Hui Hai Pan worked as a tool and die maker and big made car parts, they saved their money to try to build a better middle class life in Canada than they had in Vietnam. And as they looked to live to have a better life and pass that on to their children, they wound up building a family where Jennifer was the first child born in 1986 and her brother Felix was born in 1989. And as these two parents basically were looking to give a better life to their children, they didn't know that they were putting their daughter on the road to becoming a woman in crisis by pushing her so hard under the model of tiger parenting. Now, the model of tiger parenting is where the parents are extremely strict and they push and drive their children to strive for success. Unfortunately, what happened with Jennifer Pound was that she was under so much pressure as related to this whole model of parenting that she was basically not able to try to meet the expectations of her parents and this basically put her on a road to entering a place I call the secret world in my book, The Man Crisis, and in my other book, The Woman Crisis. Now, under the whole model of tiger parenting, the parents are extremely aggressive in trying to get their children to achieve high levels of academic success and high levels of extracurricular success in things like music or sports, and sadly, what happens to a lot of Asian children is they are emotionally abused under this model of tiger parenting. And as the parents look to push the children towards academic success, they participate in emotional and verbal abuse and do not look to meet the child's emotional needs. And that makes the child really start to feel like they are alone. And as they start to feel like they are alone, what happens to those children is instead of looking to be a part of the real world, what they do in order to feel like they have any sort of semblance of, of any sort of life is enter a place I call the secret world. Now, in the case of Jennifer Pond, what happened to her is her parents were so strict that she wasn't even allowed to go out and hang out with friends, wasn't able to go out to parties, and her schedule was so micromanaged that her parents basically dictated her entire schedule from sunup to sundown, taking her directly from school to places like the um, ice rink to be training for Olympic skating, and also took her to, to, to star me, study music theory and play piano, and structured her schedule so tightly that she basically had no real room to breathe 
or any room to learn about social or interpersonal skills. Basically, she was all focused on academics to the point where she basically had no real time to even be a, just a child. And this is what basically started Jennifer Pond to enter that place I call the secret world because she had no life in the real world. So what she did was enter into the secret world in an effort to escape the pressures to be perfect. This is what I talk about in depth in a chapter of The Woman Crisis, The Pressure to Be Perfect. And Jennifer Pan, having no place to go, entered the secret world, a place where she basically felt safe about expressing her natural femininity and her natural sexuality and, and felt safe in that place because it was the only place where she felt like she could be her real self. But sadly, as she entered that secret world, what she started to participate in was a pattern of behavior where she believed lying was perfectly fine. Now, in an effort to keep her two worlds apart, she tried to keep her world smooth in an effort to try to please her parents. And in an effort to try to please her parents, what Jennifer Pond did was while she tried her best in school to get good grades, but I think she was struggled because of the pressures her parents put on her, she only got in the 70% range for grades, and that really put pressure on her. So in order to keep her world smooth, what she started to do was forge her report cards to try to trick her parents into believing that she got straight A's. And this worked for some time until Jennifer Pond wound up failing a calculus class in 12th grade or grade 12. And as she failed this whole calculus class, what happened was her whole she was uh, her admission to Ryerson University wound up getting rescinded. And as that admission wound up getting rescinded, this is where Jennifer Pond started to go into a further state of decline as she looked to try to maintain the smooth world as related to her life. She looked to try to maintain that smooth world by telling more lies. And as she told those more lies, because she didn't want her parents to see her as a failure, what she did was go and pretend that she attended university, but was not attending school. Instead, what she was doing was sitting in cafes, teaching piano, and working in a restaurant to earn money, and went out here and continued to maintain this facade as related to these two smooth worlds, and again, continue to go out and maintain this smooth world in effort to please her parents. And as she looked to maintain that smooth world, she then got involved with a boyfriend um, to who was Daniel Chi Kai Wong or Daniel Wong. And as she got in Daniel with Daniel Wong, she fat, finally had the relationship she wanted. Unfortunately, the relationship that she had was with a guy who was basically a pookie, a man far below what her family standards were. So she kept that relationship secret as well in an effort to keep things looking perfect. But the whole thing that she was doing to try to pretend at, was making it where everything was, was not really real. And again, she was basically living a lie, living a lie because she didn't want to um, go out here and be feeling like a disgrace to her parents due to the aggressive tiger parenting model. So what she did was just try to keep up this world of lies, a world of lies where she said that she was attending these schools, making up fake transcripts and even made up a fake college degree. And as she was looking to again keep up this facade of this world, she basically wound up making things even worse for herself talking about how she had graduated after graduating Ryerson University, then said that she was um, looking to transfer to a school and also worked as a volunteer for the hospital for sick children. However, her parents started to become suspicious and her family started to become suspicious because she did not have a hospital ID badge or a uniform. And eventually, Jennifer Pound's mother followed her daughter to work and found out her lie. And after they found out her lie, the parents originally wanted to throw her out of the house, but the mother persuaded to her to, to, to let the daughter stay. 
And even though she hadn't completed high school, they worked with her to, towards working to complete high school and then encouraged her to apply to university. But she was told that she could not c continue to maintain her relationship with her boyfriend, Daniel Wong, due to him being a guy from a different ethnic background because he was mixed Chinese and Filipino. Um, and that was something that this Vietnamese family frowned on because they wanted their daughter to date a successful Vietnamese man and basically wound up continuing to put on more pressure on Jennifer Pam. And again, this pressure started to become even more overwhelming because this girl, who was now about 22 years old, basically was under this pressure and the parents started to control her to the point where they wouldn't even let her out of the house outside of school and basically were looking to even monitor the gas on her car. That's how the tight the pressure came on to try to keep this daughter on the road to perfection. But sadly, Jennifer Wong couldn't see that as a citizen of Canada, she had diff different options. I mean, Jennifer Pan did have options, but she didn't seek to go for them. No, she wanted to continue maintaining the road that her parents had for success and didn't and, and wanted to stay on that road and wanted to stay on that road to the point where it basically put her on the road to looking to again become so frustrated and so overwhelmed that she started thinking about looking to murder her parents to finally not only get the freedom but also be able to get the insurance money for from those parents now before she came up with this scheme she, um Daniel Wong had basically broken up with her, and as Daniel Wong had broken up with her, basically Jennifer came up with a scheme as related to her lies to tell her, them that several men had did something to sexually violated her, and talked about how people had threatened her, how the other woman had threatened her life, and came up with these lies, but sadly Daniel Wong still tried to stay with Jennifer Pam, and that was a big mistake on his part, because as Jennifer Pam was becoming more and more frustrated about the pressure she was un under, she ent further entered the secret world, seething and boiling in anger about not being able to live her life or have this freedom, and frustrated about not being able to have the freedom to live her life, she got in contact with a high school friend who had boasted of robbing people at Nice Point, and suggest and one of them who possibly suggested that she go out and um plan the murder of her parents and again this guy introduced her to ricardo duncan a goth kid who really wasn't goth because goths do not participate in violence and jennifer penn paid this kid to participate in a hit on her parents but all she got was scammed and this guy basically took her money, $1,500 that she had saved, and then went on with his, went on and scammed her. And basically she got played. And after she got played, this is where Jennifer Penn and Wong basically got together and planned to hire a professional hitman for $10,000 to kill her parents and eventually wound up contacting Roy Crawford, a Jamaican born man, who gave her a burner phone so that she could be contacted without using her cell phone, then contacted another man, Eric Sean Sniper Cardi, and who in turn contacted David Mavagam. And again, all of these men came together as part of a plan to participate in the murder of Jennifer Pan's parents. And Jennifer Pan basically set up the whole plan for the murder on November 8th of 2010, when she unlocked the front door of the family home before before she went to bed and then spoke to Mavangam about the hit and eventually all of those men entered the home armed and eventually wound up coming into the home and as they came into the home they ran and demanded money and ransacked the bedroom they then took Bick and Han into the basement and shot them several times now, Bick Pond wound up dying almost immediately, and her, the father, Han, wound up surviving, and when he, when he, after he got shot, he eventually came out back into consciousness, 
and then ran out of the home screaming and that's where they made a 911 call and Jennifer Pan made it look like she was a part of the um, a victim of the robbery but she wasn't a victim of a robbery and this is where the whole story basically started to change as related to everything because eventually after Jennifer Pan tried to run this scheme eventually the father came out of a coma and told everyone that Jennifer Pan had been talking to one of the killers and also the police started to do a further investigation and find evidence that showed that this was not a home invasion because no valuables were stolen and nothing was taken as related to the home so the entire the police started to again as they did their investigation they eventually started to see Jennifer Pan and her boyfriend as suspects in this murder and as they saw Jennifer Pan and her boyfriend Daniel Wong as suspects this is where the people in Canada eventually decided to prosecute char arrest Jennifer Pan and charge her with the murder of her mother and the attempted murder of her father and eventually it was her father's testimony that led to Jennifer Pan winding up getting convicted for the murder of her mother and attempted murder of her father and eventually Jennifer Pan and her boyfriend were sentenced to 25 years to life in prison and that's where they currently are today but Jennifer Pam wound up not being on a road to success and on the road to becoming a woman in crisis due to the aggressive parenting of, of her parents as related to tiger parenting. And that tiger parenting turned their child not into a tiger, but into a demon. And this demon, basically, instead of being a child who would show the pride of those parents, brought those parents to shame bought those parents to shame because this child just could not stand the pressures to be perfect. Pressures to be perfect that took this child on a road where she was planning not to work towards success, but to plan murder and plan murder out of desperation because in the secret world, people become desperate because they don't learn how to think critically or how to problem solve. Because if Jennifer Pam had learned those critical life skills from her parents as they looked to meet her emotional needs, she would have found an alternative road to success as related to life and understood that in the time that she took to fabricate those lies as related to the failure of the calculus class, she could have gone on a road to get her GED and get that GED and then still be able to go on to university, go on to university and focus on a major that worked towards her passions and could have it taught used taught piano in that time as she was working her way towards that goal but because she was so caught up in tunnel vision as related to the way her parents parented her she didn't really have a think about an alternative solution towards getting the to the, towards the goal of success because success is subjective and there's no one road to success that's the thing that really messed up Jennifer Pan that put her on the road to becoming a woman in crisis and she didn't understand that there is more than one road to success and that success doesn't always mean that you're going to have to go out here and make lots of money guaranteed in the beginning or be on a certain road but when you're on the road of the tiger parent the tiger parent has you in a place where you feel like you're inferior if you don't measure up to these standards. You, you're working towards this child, this parent's respect, but this parent is not respecting you and is not meeting your emotional needs to make you feel emotionally secure. And as that child doesn't feel emotionally secure, as they are in their insecurities in the secret world, they believe they have to go to extremes to try to get to that road to perfection. But sadly, what happened off to Jennifer Pan is that she didn't wind up on the road to perfection. She wound up being a disgrace to her family to the point where her brother basically cut off all contact with her and keeps a distance from the father. Again, yes, the brother did get success, but the family was a failure. And the family was a failure because they followed a dysfunctional family model, a dysfunctional family model that didn't create a successful daughter, 
but just created a daughter who wound up on the road to becoming yet another woman in crisis. Now, the second person I'm going to be talking about in this historical couples in crisis series is Jennifer Pan's boyfriend, Daniel Wong. Now, Daniel Wong was on the road to becoming a man in crisis way before he ever got involved with Jennifer Pan because he didn't come from the right Asian families as related to the overall Asian culture. Now, when it comes to Asian culture, the, as related to the model of tiger parenting, the families want everything to be perfect so that when a child that they raise goes out and looks to have a relationship, they get involved with the right person. And Daniel Wong was never really considered to be the right person for Jennifer Pan as related to her family because he was coming from a mixed household where he was born Chinese and Filipino and came from a poor household. And because he came from a poor household, he was on the road to becoming a man in crisis due to the strict social rules as related to Asian, Amer Asian American and Asian culture in the West. Now, when it comes to Asian families, they are very strict about who their children get involved with and again, Daniel Wong, coming from the wrong side of the families, basically was someone they didn't consider to be the right person to be in a relationship with their daughter. And basically, when it came to Daniel Wong, because of that whole family upbringing, he grew up to become an Asian version of Pookie, a guy who was basically just running the streets and getting into fights with people at school, and as he got into fights with people at school, he was out here dealing drugs and also worked at a pizza place. Now, as he was out here selling marijuana, he basically was one of these dudes who, again, basically caught the eye of Jennifer Pan as she was on her road to decline. And as she was on her road to decline after failing that calculus class, she then ran into Daniel Wong and as they came together, she had something in common with him because she identified with him being a guy who was a failure and she herself felt like a failure. So they had that in common. And as they came together, he did gave her one thing that other people didn't give her in her life in that strict household. In that strict household, Jennifer Pan got all of the needs met as related to the economic and needs to be cared for, but she wasn't given her emotional needs, and her emotional needs were not met by her tiger parents. Her tiger parents aggressively pushed her for success, but did not meet those emotional needs, and that's where Daniel Wong, the bad boy, came in. Now, I've talked about this in many videos about how when a father doesn't meet a daughter's emotional needs, what that does is lead to her being attracted to bad boys. And that's what happened in this case of Daniel Wong. She wound up attracted to this bad boy because this bad boy basically was looking to give her attention and meet her emotional needs. And as she was getting her emotional needs, she felt like she wanted to maintain this relationship with Daniel Wong and in an effort to maintain this relationship in the secret world and keep her world smooth as related to the failures that she had as related to school, this is where Jennifer Pan started to go out and tell lies. Now, a lot of people want to say that Daniel Wong was the one who had influence on Jennifer Pan, but when I look at the overall reports and look at it as related to the behaviors that I've seen in stories I've done for the man crisis and the woman crisis, it's clear to me that Jennifer Pan was the one who was leading this relationship and leading this relationship because she wanted to maintain it desperately because she basically, this was the only person meeting her emotional needs. And when it came to Daniel Wong, this was his ability is one of his opportunities to get sexual access from a girl. So basically this relationship was one that was forged out of desperation. Again, 
Jennifer Pan, desperate to get her emotional needs met, and Daniel Wong, looking for some easy sexual access, where he hoped to be able to get this Jennifer Pan to drop the skid mark jockey draws, and he could go out here and take the egg roll out and stick it in the into the atomic walk reactor and be able to participate in some cooking and be able to make some some young guy. That's basically what Daniel Wong was looking to do as related to Jennifer Pan. And again, Jennifer Pan was desperate to be able to get her emotional needs met. And both of these individuals just came together in desperation and desperation overall. Desperation because this guy basically, again, he as a pookie, he was looking for a woman to basically take care of him because he wasn't able to go out here and be able to take care of himself due to him not having male life skills or male survival skills because he was basically scavenging for a life, working at a pizza place and selling drugs and getting in the fights. So he was looking for a woman to lean on in a codependent relationship. And as he was looking for this woman to lean on in a codependent relationship, Jennifer Pan was looking to, again, find that love she couldn't get from her family. And that's what brought the two of them together. And as she looked to maintain that that world that where she felt emotionally secure, she started to tell lots of lies as related to doing well in school, but had basically dropped out of school and as she dropped out of school, she told lies for years that she was going to college and volunteering at places like the hospital for sick children. And eventually what happened was that the relationship strained and struggled because eventually after her parents found out that she was with um, Daniel Wong and he came from a different ethnic background, her parents basically were so strict on Jennifer Pam that they told her that she couldn't see him and basically made it where she couldn't go anywhere outside of her piano teaching job. And the two tried to remain in contact, but eventually by 2009, Daniel Wong had gotten tired of being involved with Jennifer Pam and, limit, and the limited access he had to her due to her parents and eventually broke off the relationship with Jennifer Pam. And eventually, after he broke off the relationship with Jennifer Pan, he was going out here looking to pursue a relationship with another woman. And as he was trying to pursue that relationship with another woman, this is where Jennifer Pan basically started to use her ability to lie to try to manipulate Daniel Wong and lied to him by saying that a man had entered her house and came in and showed a police badge. And then several men rushed in and gang violated her and then also said that a bullet was mailed to her and and said that all of these efforts were orchestrated by Dan, by by Daniel Wong's new girlfriend but this was basically a lie that Jennifer Pan was telling in an effort to try to manipulate Daniel Wong into maintaining a relationship with her and sadly Daniel Wong being a simp overall basically i believe believed those lies and as he believed those lies that were told to him by Jennifer Pam, instead of him charging this woman to the game and, uh, and seeing her for the liar that she was, he continued to maintain this relationship, showing me how much of a beta male he was and a simp that he was over this woman. Because if this woman, again, would, was out here and if all this happened, why didn't dude go to the police? You would think he would have gone to the police as related to this case because this woman's lies really were not consistent and again lies that were not consistent because they just didn't make any logical sense but with him being a pookie he heard about the police badge and got emotional and not literally thinking critically about this story because you would if this is your girlfriend you would want to make sure that she was safe and all right and you would want to get her to a hospital to be able to deal with this whole situation and deal with this trauma but this male again because he didn't have male life skills like critical thinking believed this story a lock stock and barrel and basically went from having a 
relationship with a woman who possibly was functional to returning to the dysfunctional codependent relationship with Jennifer Pam. And as he returned to that codependent relationship with Jennifer Pam, he wound up in a situation where she got leverage because he basically failed the crop test because he didn't have a man to give him guidance to let him know about the scam and the game that was being run on him. Because when a woman lies like this, it's an extremely dangerous situation to be in. It's an extremely dangerous situation to be in because if she'll lie like this, then she'll lie throughout the relationship. And that's where Daniel Wong got it twisted. He got it twisted because as she told this lie to him, he didn't understand how her lies could come back to him later in a relationship. And everything that she was doing could have been done to him as related to that relationship. And that's where Daniel Wong went from being a man who was struggling to winding up on the road to becoming a man further in crisis because as 2009 turned into 2010, Jennifer Pan was feeling more and more overwhelmed by the stifling environment that her parents put her under as related to tiger parenting. Now this 20 something year old woman could have easily just basically got her GED and went out here and got went to college and worked her way through college without the support of her parents, but because she was so caught up in the emotional attachment to her parents and trying to please their parents, she basically put Daniel Wong on the road to being a man in crisis by going out here and talking about how she basically wanted to take the life of her parents and this is where Daniel Wong basically went out here and got in, involved with this whole murder plan a murder plan that basically Jennifer Pan basically got involved with with another guy who said that he robbed kids at knife point this guy Andrew Montemayor and then he induced her to Ricardo Duncan a fake goth who she paid $1,500 to to kill her father in the parking lot but that never happened and again, what happened with Duncan is that he wound up, again, according to some reports, taking the money and running. And after that money was taken and run, eventually, he, he then, again, according to other reports, returned this money. And basically, that whole deal fell apart. Now, after that fell apart, this is where Daniel Wong then came up with a plan to, with Jennifer Wong to hire a hitman. A plan, basically, I believe more Jennifer came up with. And again, the plan was to hire the hitman for $10,000, and then she would inherit the half million dollars together, and they would move in together. Now, this was a plan that was created based in the rose-colored reality of the secret world. It was a plan based on fantasy, and eventually what happened was that Daniel Wong got involved with this plan. Again, contact connected Pan with Lenford Roy Crawford and gave her a burner phone, and after she got connected with this dude, two other dudes came in, and those two other dudes came in, um, David Mavagam and, and another guy, um, Eric Sean Sniper, Cardi. And eventually they all came together to participate in this whole plan to murder Jennifer Pan's parents on November 8th, 2010, where Jennifer Pan, with malicious forethought and intent, unlocked the front door of the family home and the hitmen came in. And as the hitmen came in, they then go in and took the parents out of their bedroom tied them up in the basement and, and murdered Jennifer Pan's mother and then shot uh, her father. But eventually what the father did was wake up and miraculously from the shooting and eventually raced out of the home. And Jennifer Pan still tried to keep this whole situation going and tried to do it by making a 911 call where she told lies. And then eventually as, they, as the police came in, they thought that this was a home invasion, but then grew skeptical because lots of valuables were left in the home. And eventually they found that the whole story really didn't make sense once, De once um, Han came out of that coma, medically induced coma and talked about how he saw Jennifer whispering to one of the hitmen in a friendly and soft manner. And then Jennifer eventually, after multiple interviews, admitted that she hired the three killers and the plan was and then tried to tell the lie that it was planned to kill her, not the parents, but eventually it was found out that she basically was the one who planned this whole murder and basically led to her and her boyfriend winding up 
getting arrested, getting tried for this crime, and eventually Daniel Wong was convicted at the side of Jennifer Pam. And after they got convicted, Daniel Wong basically wound up in prison, wound up in prison, and is now there ever for the rest of his life. And instead of him being a man on the street with his freedom, he is now inside of the penitentiary for the rest of his life. And as he's been in that prison, he has been basically suffering at, 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 the, at the authority of the CEOs and Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, Big Dave, Melvin, and Mr. Sprinkles as they trade him for Little Debbie snack cakes, ramen noodles, packets of Crystal Light lemonade, packets of Crystal Light tea, off-brand orange drink, off-brand grape drink, off-brand pineapple drink, off-brand fruit punch, off-brand apple juice, off-brand Oreo cookies, off-brand lemon cookies, off-brand duplex cookies, off-brand vanilla wafers, off-brand ginger snaps, off-brand sugar wafers, Hunt's snack pack puddings, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Pies, prison chips, Fritos chips, packets of beef, packets of soy sauce, packets of chicken, packets of turkey, packets of beef jerky, Taster's Choice Coffee. I mean, he's being traded for all of the commissary and being filled with lots of egg rolls and they are participating in cream of some young guy on his front side and his back side as and after they finish spit roasting him with the egg rolls the mr sprinkles will come in and spray the special sauce all over the front side and the back side and then call all the guys of cell block d to see his handiwork where they split his cheeks open and show his backside looking like the inside of an intimate louisiana crunch cake as they finish their dessert. And that is what's happening now to Daniel Wong at, and at, by Mr. Sprinkles, who afterwards will have him washing the skid marks out of his fruit a little and draws and have him humiliated as related to the situation. And as he's in this penitentiary, he's possibly ruining the day that he got involved with Jennifer Pan. Jennifer Pan, a woman who was in crisis due to her strict family, but what led to him being a man in crisis was him coming from a culture where he could not actualize his potential as a man, even though his family immigrated to Canada for a better opportunity. He wasn't allowed to have that opportunity due to the unwritten and written social rules of Asian culture, and that basically led to Daniel Wong winding up on the road to becoming an Asian pookie, a pookie who basically followed the lead of Jennifer Pam, and following the lead of Jennifer Pam, as related to maintaining that toxic and codependent relationship, is what led, what led Daniel Wong from being on the road to being a man who would struggle to winding up becoming a man in crisis. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to beta males winding up on a road to dysfunction and how to break up that dysfunctional life paradigm, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you want to learn why so many women like Jennifer Pan wind up on a road to dysfunction and their quest to um, the pressures to be perfect, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, and read the chapter, The Pressure to be Perfect, to find out why women like Jennifer Pan wind up on a dysfunctional road and how to break out of that dysfunctional road of trying to be perfect. You can learn all about how to overcome that road of the pressure to be perfect with my book, The Woman Crisis, which you can find on Amazon.com and other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. Now, this was a video requested by a viewer as related to the historical Men and Women in Crisis series. And if you want to suggest a person for the historical Men and Women in Crisis series, you can send a donation for a minimum of $15 to the Cash App or the PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this installment in the Historical Men and Women in Crisis series, or what I call the Couples in Crisis series. You can rate, comment, and subscribe. Now available in paperback. 
From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.